What's up guys, you know if you see that logo there, that means there's another video coming out. And you guys know, lately I've been uh, very busy in doing the King Hauler, the Night Hauler, and the uh, Flatbed Trailer. Well, today the final piece for the semi-crazy puzzle has come in. Straight from China. This is the 114th scale Tamiya Pole Trailer. Just came today, China Airmail, so we're going to unbox them. This time I'm actually going to do a build. Now these, you see right here, <clears throat> these are the PVC pipes that you load with that go on the trailer. I'm going to give you five of them for a three offset on the bottom and two on top, and then you chain down. So for what we're going to do right now, since we have a spare trailer laying around, we're going to go ahead and throw these on here. We're going to go ahead and load down the uh, flatbed just, just to hold those. Oh, look at that. They fit. Uh, mild overhang on the, the flatbed, but we're good with that. As always, we've got our instructions. That's just simplistic stuff there. And just like the last kit, there's just two boxes. One has the metal parts in it, and one has your plastic parts. So, once again, we do the famous goodbye. So we're gonna go here. I'm gonna sit you guys down. So don't mind me here. And this hideous camera angle too. Wow. Take our first box here, which all of them always have uh, tape on them. So, <clears throat> open up the first box, and I uh, guarantee you there's not that many plastic pieces this time around. Nowhere near as many as before. Lights, rims, a few plastic uh, axle tubes. A little bit of stuff here, fifth wheel hookup stuff, and the big back chrome plate piece for it. And in this one we have just literally a few stickers. That's the smallest sticker sheet I've ever seen come out of a Tamiya. So that's out of box number one. Now we go to the metal parts box. Okay, we've got pieces of wood for some reason. We've got the uh, metal pole extensions. Once again, I have the biggest habit of pulling the D bag out first. So, you know, the bags go all the way down to D this time. A, B, C, D. We've got our metal fenders. We've got, I guess, what would be the metal frame on the rear. And then, of course, we have all the tires. And that literally is all that is composed in that. So I'm going to do something just to fill a little bit more space here on the video. I'm going to go ahead and open up these rims, pop them loose. I don't ever glue these. No, one of them already came loose. Two of them already came loose. All eight tires. I don't ever glue them because they don't seem to spin. Especially when they're not under tension. So there's one tire done. There's two. A little too far on that one, but. There's three. Jeez. Some are a little hard to get in. Which, as you can see, by judging by how hard some of these are to get in, this is the reason why I don't glue them, even though they say to glue them. Four, we're halfway done. Uh, 
That was not the tire that made that noise, that was my knuckle. There's five. There's six. Almost done. Seven. And the last one. Eight. So, we know you have your inners, which you never see, and then you have your outers. The way they connect is there's three little alignment dowels. There are three pins on that tire, and then there's three holes on that tire. You line up your pins, wherever they might be. It's hard to see because there's two different size holes. One is for the screws, and one is for attaching your actual uh, the duels together like so usually they fit a lot tighter and they pop into place like that so now you get almost a completed set of duels but you can see there's three openings there's one right there one right there and one right there you run three little screws and on the back side you've got three little uh, captures for the little nuts that go in there and then you just screw them in so might as well go ahead and try and stick these remaining three together for you and string out a video as long as I can just to keep you guys entertained there's two sets of duels so one axle is complete those are both the outers and these are both inners so now all that's left, that one went right together, our third one, and now I move on to the last. This is, I think, one of the later steps, but I always do this first just to get it done. So all I have to do is literally just put the three screws in, because by that time I'm already ready to be hooking it up and driving it around. And there you go. There's all four, uh, all four sets of duels for both your axles. Now, obviously, this means we're gonna go straight into a build series, which this time I am going to do a build series. Should have done it on the flatbed because it took forever and it was a really fun build. This one looks like it's a lot far simpler, so I'm electively going to do a build series this time, so you guys will have the pleasure of riding along. All right, later. All right, what I've decided to do with this build is I'm just going to string all the parts out into one big build series, seeing how it'd be stupid just to film a couple or three or four couple minute videos. So <clears throat> I decided I'm going to do everything. So we've gone through step one, which is attaching the uh, pole cap. We've built the uh, pole guide assembly. Gone through here and I've done the uh, pole extensions gone through here and I've just now finished this step here and gone to this one both it together resulting in this assembly here now this does have this is a uh, a pinnel hitch which this can be interesting to see how it works but you remove this nut here and you can slide the trailer all the way back I've yet to figure out the way it works yet, but the next step we're going to be moving into is building the, uh, taking the big plastic back rail area and putting the assembly together and then moving on to the, uh, downriggers for the, uh, legs there, and then we're going to be putting the axles and all that good stuff on there, so that'll be in the next segment of this video. Now keep in mind, this will be a one part build video so it'll be probably a, a good long video but it'll have the entire build in it so there's where we're at now we we'll go back to work and we're gonna do some more to it all right we're further along now I've got the rear section of the trailer attached the main frame is down I've got the uh, leaf spring assemblies on I have the axle housings put together now the next step in this is going to be putting the uh, 
axles onto the actual leaf springs, connecting them together, building the shocks as I've done a thousand times before now, and then moving on to the mud flaps and everything. So we'll get steps 10, 11, 12, and 13 done, and then I will, uh, well, might go a little bit further than that. Might go to step 14, get the bumpers. Of course, you're pretty much almost done by then. So, I don't know. We'll probably end up just uh, slapping the, the axles on, and then I'll get the uh, whole assembly put together, and probably put the tires together and put them on, even though they're supposed to go on last. I don't like doing it that way. I like having it done so I can at least see what it's going to look like with the tires. The only thing I don't like about this trailer so far is it only has one jack leg. There's not two for it, like the flatbed over there. There's only one, so there is a disadvantage of having a pole trailer, but we'll see. So, back to building. Alright, here we are again. We're further along in the build. I've got the uh, axles and the uh, shocks mounted on, which is the standard for any uh, of the 114th scale trucks and trailers. They're all the same. They've got the uh, upside down leaf spring with the uh, plastic links that mount to the axles, which give you your pivot front and back. On top of that, I've also mounted a little undershield. This is more of a Euro style trailer. And I've also mounted the, uh, the mud flaps on there. And we're, we're getting along pretty good in this build. Uh, as you can see, the pipe is still sitting on the trailer and I got both trucks fully charged. I'm anxious to get them both out with the trailers. This one here, we're on officially step 14. And that would be putting together the rear bumper assembly, putting together the mud flaps, and the lower bumper than the tires, and then we're pretty much almost done. We'll be moving into the D-bag, which entails uh, putting together the front bunk or the back bunk plate, which is actually swiveled, which is really nice. And then after that, we move on to the front bunk plate where it attaches via a pintle hitch versus the uh, fifth wheel. So I've got to double check and make sure, yeah, it does. It gives you the uh, mount for it, the sub chassis, which might mean I might have to do some modification to the rear of the king hauler because it does show this mounting up to the man. Or no, you do have a fifth wheel hitch. You've got a fifth wheel hitch up there, that's, that's nice. A joint stopper, they call it, for the uh, other deal. And then you have also have your uh, fifth wheel kingpin, so that middle piece there, right there, is going to be taken out. So, on to the next step, doing the rear bumper, mud flaps, and putting the tires on the trailer. Hey right, guys, I've gotten uh, three out of the four... Uh, sets of duals permanently attached. As you can see by the trailer, we're pretty much done. I've got the lights in. Bumpers on, mud flaps are on. Pretty much waiting on tires here. I'm gonna show you my way of getting, see these little dinky uh, hexes? There's the little bitty, uh, the little bitty hex nuts that go in there. I'm gonna show you guys how I put them in. It makes it a lot easier. Take a little tiny Allen head, it fits right through the center of that. Stick it down in there and then just wiggle your Allen head free. Sets it in there, then you just turn the tire around, put your finger on it, go to the hole that's lined up, drop your little screw down in there and uh, just start tightening away till it's done. Like that one there. And once again, you just take it and you just grab it and you get it stuck right on the end where it gives it enough, where it will stay on while you're trying to get it lined up in the hole. And then once again, just repeat process. You hold from the back side with your finger where the nut is so it doesn't slip out of the little uh, slot. They do go on pretty tight, but if you can wiggle it out good enough, you can set it right down in the hole. 
And then the other pain is trying to get these little bitty screws down in here too. Because the hole you can almost not see since it is uh, acts as like a faux lug nut. The rest of the wheel does have little plastic nubs. Like now this one I felt the washer, sh or the nut shift. So I just move my finger around a little bit until I get it to where it will tighten up. Which it's still shifting. I think I got it down this time though. Yep. Okay, so that's all those on there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the trailer itself. Because the next step is to put the wheels on. And there's only one way that these go on. I found out the hard way. If you try to put it on this way. Nothing works. It free spins. If you put it on this way. Well, actually, no. You put it on this way, it doesn't work at all. You have to put it on with the little flared sides out. So you just take normal hex. Take your wheel nut. With this case, unlike most of my other vehicles, that I've really, really torqued down the uh, the wheels on. This one I can just use the standard multi-tool that you have. Every other wheel I use, like on my uh, SCX10 brushless one that I did with the Timbuk2, I have to make sure that those lug nuts are on there extra tight, otherwise they always have a habit of backing off. and wanting to fall off and I don't want to put Loctite on it so I use a uh, quarter drive ratchet with a seven millimeter socket on it and so now we got two of the four sets of tires mounted let's slide the next one on oh that chrome looks pretty Now there is quite a bit of, uh, the trailer is not really that much on the king hauler itself. I know when I did the uh, SCX10 rims on it, there was quite a lot of uh, thread sticking through. So I actually used uh, SCX10 hub covers to hide all the thread on the king hauler. The night hauler, it's just got all that thread exposed. So there you have it, there's that. It Now I see why it only has one jack leg because it really doesn't need that much, uh, really doesn't need that much support unless it's fully loaded. But uh, just like every other Tamiya, uh, Tamiya trailer, it will spring load and pop back up, but that's pretty darn stable right there. So we're almost at the end of the line here. We've got, Basically just the upright swivel post for the rear and the upright swivel post for the front to do. And then we'll be done with this one almost. So, moving on. Next video will be coming up. Alright you guys, the moment you've all been waiting for has now come. Of course, there's one thing I want to do first just because it's just too cool for school. I want to get this trailer locked on first so I got a good idea what the... Other truck's gonna look like with oversized pipes on it because you know I'm not running pipe. There's the night hauler with a load of pipe. I do have the chains, I just need to put them on. But here we go. There is the completed trailer for the king hauler. Now that's set, there's three different depths you can set. You can set the long trailer like I have, you can collapse one of these and have a middle sized trailer. Or you can collapse it all the way down and have a small trailer. But, here's where it gets interesting. You guys are going to sit here and watch this, and you're going to be like, holy shit. Take the pin loose. Which, by the way, I did have to lose my uh, stock rear bumper to put the uh, aftermarket one in place. But, we take this piece and we set her up here. And presto, we've got a logging truck. Granted, the wheels do rub on the back a little bit. We do have a 
a log truck. So now you guys know what my plan is for this. Both trucks will be hauling timber. The night hauler, probably not as much because it's more of a highway tractor, fancy looking thing. But old school right there. Old school is going to be doing a lot of hardcore logging work. Crow's Nest is going to be kind of support. So, all that's left now to do is put the little stickers and stuff they have for you on here. And we're done. Next thing you should see is hopefully, now the weather's gotten real warm. All the bugs and crap have come out, so it's getting gnarly down in the woods. Hopefully the next video you guys will see of Old School and the Crow's Nest will be down in the woods doing some logging. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. As Once again, I am more than impressed with the uh, overall look of the, tra the trailer, the truck. The instructions were freaking phenomenal. They were extremely high detail. Um, it was a blast to put together like always. And thanks for watching, guys. Till next time, it's Man Cave out.